welcome to a new session of community today we will be discussing about waste management and this is me dr athira from dr teeth so let's begin to begin with we need to know what do we mean by waste management so waste management means it refers to the activities of collection transportation processing recycling disposal of a waste these waste can be solids liquids gaseous or even it can be a radioactive substance each we have different methods of disposing it now let's see what do we mean by solid waste yes it is self explanatory actually solid waste means these are non liquid non soluble materials and it contain complex and hazardous substances now let's see what all it includes solid waste will include the garbages which are the food wastes the rubbish those are the plastics paper wood metals etc or the demolition products like bricks pipes or any sewage treatment residues or dead animals or it can be the manure and other discarded materials see what are the concept of waste management yes it is the recycle reduce and reuse is it so we can say the three r's are reduce reuse and recycle this is the concept of waste management now let's see what are the steps the first one is the storage yes we all have to collect waste in a larger dust bins and it should have a close fitting cover to close it then the next is the collection part you can collect the waste from each house that's the best method actually or also we, we see in our lanes we have the public bins in which we collect the waste and the final step is the transportation and the transportation should be done in an enclosed van and from there it should reach the place of processing or to the area of the disposal site now let's see the classification of wastes we have a long classification actually let's move on the first one is the infectious waste so infectious waste means waste from the isolation wards like tissues materials or equipments even the excreta comes under the infectious waste next is the pathological waste it means the human tissues body parts or the fetuses not only the body parts or tissues it also includes the fluids like blood and other body fluids next we have pressurized containers those are the gas cylinders gas cartridges aerosol cans then the radioactive waste it is the unused liquids of the radiotherapy or the laboratory researchers also the patients who we treat with radionuclides their excreta or urine may also contain these radioactive wastes then we have the sharps we all are familiar isn't it like needles infusion set scalpels knives blades broken glasses these all come under the sharps then we have the pharmaceutical waste which contain that is the medicines which have expired those all come under pharmaceutical waste then we have genotoxic waste these are the cytotoxic drugs waste from the cytotoxic drugs then the chemical waste means the laboratory reagents the film developer the disinfectant that we use to disinfect our clinics all come under the chemical waste then we have the final that is the waste high content of heavy metals those are batteries broken thermometers blood pressure gauges these all come under waste with high content of heavy metals so these are the nine different types of classification for wastes see uh, there are many refuse is it from our kitchen we have many waste like that from the medical field also we have many healthcare waste such waste we call as healthcare waste now let's see what are the hazards or which all categories causes hazards to this department that is the medical department so the hazards first is from the infectious waste and sharps we all know if we get a prick with the needle or if we cut if we get a cut with a bp blade or any abrasions what happens this infectious pathogens they will enter our body through this cut and they can cause make us ill not only through the cuts they can also be inhaled 
through the mucous membrane and the most concern we are most concerned about this type of infection by mainly the hiv or the hepatitis b and c strains that is the hazards from infectious waste and sharps next is the hazards from chemical and pharmaceutical waste what happens is that even if we have acute or chronic exposure or even injuries or burns we may get toxified okay this toxication are the main hazards of chemical and pharmaceutical wastes next we have the hazards from genotoxic waste you know these type of hazards are mainly for the healthcare workers who are handling these genotoxic waste and not only that the severity of this hazard is mainly governed by the combination of substance toxicity and the extent and duration of its exposure that is the main important thing of hazards from genotoxic waste then we have the hazards from radioactive waste it can include the uh, symptoms can include from like headache dizziness vomiting and these all are the more even more serious problems and not only like that these are genotoxic too it can affect our genetic material next is the public sensitivity yes we all know if we see something anatomical waste a body lying somewhere it may make us a, it may give us an awkward feel isn't it yes that is simply by the public sensitivity who are the people who are affected by these health hazards waste so the healthcare workers who are affected are obviously the medical doctors nurses healthcare auxiliaries and hospital maintenance personals but besides them there are some more people let's see who are they they are the patients in healthcare establishments visitors who come to visit these patients and not only really that the workers who support the hospitals or the clinics in laundry departments waste handling departments and also in the transportation like ambulance even they will be ambulance drivers isn't it they will also be affected not only really them one more category that is the workers who are mainly uh, given role in the waste disposal faculties who take these waste to the landfills or the incinerators they are also affected by the health hazardous wastes so now we need to dispose them or we need to process this waste to make it less harmful isn't it so let's see what are the different processes such one process is the incineration so we need to know what do we mean by incineration let's see so the basic step that is followed in incineration is that the organic combustible wastes under high temperature dry oxidation process will get converted into inorganic incombustible waste okay organic combustible waste will get converted into inorganic incombustible waste now the waste that we cannot recycle or we cannot reuse or cannot be disposed into a landfill site such waste we will treat using incineration process and not only that we no need to have a pre treatment of the waste to do in incineration incinerators okay so for incineration we have different type of incinerators so such two types of incinerators are the pyrolytic incinerator and a single chamber incinerator so we will de uh, discuss this in detail first we will discuss about the pyrolytic incinerators so it is also called as controlled air incineration or double chamber incineration it has a syn these are the synonyms now what all it comprises of we said it is double chambered isn't it so double chambered means it has two chambers one is pyrolytic chamber and the other one is the post combustion chamber so uh, infectious and pathological waste can be treated using these pyrolytic incinerators now let's see the procedure for pyrolytic incinerator so what happens in this pyrolytic chamber is that the waste will be thermally decomposed how through an oxygen deficient medium at a very high temperature and it produces a solid ash and gases now let's see the procedure the mechanism isn't it okay so now 
First of all, we have a pyrolytic chamber and we have a post combustion chamber. So in pyrolytic chamber, what happens? The fuel burner will start, there is a fuel burner present in the pyrolytic chamber. So this fuel burner will start the process. So for that, we need to load the waste in suitable waste bags or in containers. It is according to our wish and we load this waste and put it in the pyrolytic chamber. So the fuel burner present over there will start to burn these waste at a high temperature. It is, remember, oxygen deficient. So what happens is that on burning these waste, there will be many gases that are produced. Now these gases are being sent to the post combustion chamber. Now what is there in post combustion chamber? There is also a fuel burner. Now this fuel burner will burn these gases at even higher temperature and we use an excess of air for that. Why? In order to minimize the smoke and the odors. So this is the basic procedure of pyrolytic incinerators. Now there are some drawbacks for this too. Okay, the drawback, the first drawback is that if the temperature do not increase beyond 200 degrees Celsius, what happens? The chemical and pharmaceutical waste will, re, uh, will make remain some residues. That is, the residues will persist if it is not exceeded to a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. And not only that, during this process, there will be emission of black smoke, fly ash and potentially toxic gases. So these are the drawbacks of pyrolytic incinerator. Now, okay, so now we have the second type of incinerator that is the single chambered incinerator. Now when do we use the single chambered incinerator? Yes, when we cannot afford a pyrolytic incinerator, we go for single chambered incinerator option. Okay, now in this we can add the waste bags one by one according to our wish. Now the procedure is that we have a 210 liter steel drum and the both ends are removed of this drum so that we can allow the burning of one bag of waste at a time. Find screen on top of the drum. Why? In order to prevent the ash or the light materials from, from blowing out. Also, we have another screen of fine grade that is present on the below, that is the down portion of the drum, and also of chimney which is fitted on top. You can see in this diagram, it's a 210 liter drum in which you can see some low wood particles, and there is a waste of bag in it. On top, here there is a fine screen, in the bottom, also there is a fine screen, and we have a chimney over here. And we add this low pieces of wood until we completely burn this waste material. And the chimney will take the smoke out of this drum. Now this too has some of the drawbacks. The drawbacks of the single chamber incinerator is same as that of the pyrolytic incinerator. It means if we do not exceed beyond 200 degrees Celsius, then there will be some persistence of the chemical and pharmaceutical residues. So that's all about the incinerators. Now the second procedure or the process of processing the waste is by the rotary kin. The rotary kin it comp comprises of two things. One is the rotating oven and a post combustion chamber. So it has a rotating oven and a post combustion chamber. Now with in for which all waste we can use this? For infectious and pathological waste and also for the chemical and pharmaceutical waste. Now, including the cytotoxic waste. Now, we cannot use this for radioactive wastes and non-risk healthcare wastes. That, uh, now, two things you have to remember for Rotrikin is that the temperature is 1200 to 1600 degree and the capacity of Rotrikin is 0.5 to 3 tons per hour. These two things, please try to memorize. Next, we have chemical disinfection. Yeah, as the name suggests itself, chemicals are added to the waste to kill or inactivate the pathogens it contains. Okay, so when we use chemicals, it's basically disinfection rather than a sterilization process. Now, we can use for treating liquid wastes like blood, urine, stools or the hospital sewage. And also, we can use for microbiological cultures, but there are certain limitations to it too that we disinfected chemically. 
Next we have the wet thermal treatment. For wet th thermal treatment, we need to remember two things. It is based on the exposure of the infectious waste to high temperature, high pressure steam. Okay. Now, our infectious waste, like two things you remember here are also high temperature, high pressure steam. Basically, it is similar to our autoclave sterilization process. Now, also this treatment or this wet thermal treatment, it is appropriate for the anatomical waste, animal carcasses and it will not efficiently treat the chemical and pharmaceutical wastes. Next, the microwave irradiation. I guess we all have, most of us have microwaves in our home, isn't it? So this mechanism of action is also almost the same. Now what happens here is that microorganisms get destroyed by the action of the microwaves, isn't it? By how? When it is having a frequency of about 2450 megahertz and a wavelength of 12.24 nanometer. So remember the frequency is about 2450 megahertz and wave 12.24 nanometer. Now, how it happens is that the water which is present in the waste will get rapidly heated by these micro waves and thereby the infectious components will get destroyed by these heat conduction process. Now, the efficiency we have to check routinely by doing some bacteriological or any virological tests. Now, this is just a demonstration. Okay, so the water, what happens, the, we, these waste materials will have certain water molecules in it and these water molecules will get heated by the microwaves and thereby the infectious components in this waste will get destroyed. Now, we have the land disposal. Now, there are two types of disposal. One is the land open dumps and the sanitary landfills. Now, do you think we can just dispose our healthcare waste like that in an open dump? No, never. Why? Because there are people who come for collecting these uh, uh, used plastics or something, all those stuffs. And also there might be animals who may gaze on it, isn't graze on it, isn't it? So, they may come in contact with these infectious pathogens. So, we cannot dispose healthcare waste into a land open dumps in an open ground. So for that, we have specially designed sanitary landfills. Now, for using sanitary landfills, we have an at least four advantages over the open dumps. So those are, there should be sanitary landfills have a geological isolation of waste from the environment. That's the best thing that we have over open dumps. And not only that, there is an appropriate engineering preparation for the sanitary landfills. Staffs are present on site to control the operations. So what happens? There will not be any trespass. Not only that, we organize the deposit and also there will be a daily coverage of waste. It's not that we just dump simply, but there is a systematic method for land waste disposals. Now you can see land open dumps. These are the land open dumps. The next one is the inertization. So by the term itself you can guess that is we make the waste inert. Inert means no actions. We make the waste inert. So inertization is basically by mixing the waste with cement and some other substances before their disposals. So let's see what are the other substances that we mix. So a typical proportion to say you can see that there is 65 percentage of pharmaceutical waste. 15% lime, 15% cement and 5% water. When we mix in this typical proportion, what happens is that it minimizes the risk of toxic substances to come towards the surface water or the ground water. Thereby, we can minimize the risk of this toxic substances that are contained within the waste. What happens after mixing is that they form a homogeneous mass and the cubes or the pellets which are produced on the site can be then transported and we can store, can store it in suitable sites. That is called as the inertization process. What we do is that the waste which we get is mixed with cements and certain other products like lime etc and they get disposed. 
that is the method used in inertization. Now let's come to the last final topic that is the biomedical waste management. So now you might get doubt, isn't it? What is the difference between the normal waste and the biomedical waste or the healthcare waste, isn't it? Now for that, there was an act which was sent in 1998 and according to that, they say that biomedical waste means, you know, we all have the diagnosis part in our clinics, the treatment part, the immunization of human beings or animals or even the research activities which are being carried out, isn't it? So every step produces some sort of wastes in these like diagnosis part or the treatment part, immunization part. So these wastes are categorized in biomedical waste according to the Biomedical Waste Management Act of 1998. So that is called as the biomedical waste. Now not only that they have even mentioned some categories, not some categories but quite too much. That is the 10 categories. You need to memorize all those and it's pretty simple. Let's move on. So comes with the first category. It's obviously it will be human waste, is it? That is human anatomical waste. And the treatment of choice is incineration or deep burial. If human waste come first, what would be the second one? Guess? Yes, it is the animal waste. And that is also the same treatment. That is the incineration and deep burial. Next, we have the microbiology and biotechnology waste. That is by Treatment is by local autoclaving, microwaving or incineration. Next category we have the sharp wastes. They are given by disinfection, treated by disinfection. The fifth one is the discarded medicines and cytotoxic drugs. You can say like the pharmaceutical wastes, isn't it? So that is by the incineration. Next we have category 6. It is the soiled waste. Just give some more attention to it. It is soiled waste, not solid, soiled waste. That is treated by incineration, autoclaving or by microwaving. Next, we have the solid waste. That is done by disinfection, either by chemical or autoclaving or any by microwaving. Next category 8, that is the liquid waste. That is disinfection by chemical treatment. Next, we have category 9. That is the solid incineration ash. Disposal in municipal landfill. And the final category is the chemicals used for the production of biologicals, chemicals used in disinfection and as insecticides. These all comes under category number 10. So for treating that we can, if they are liquids, if they are in liquid state, then we can discharge it into the drains after the chemical treatment. Or if they are solids, we can securely dump them into a landfill after the chemical treatment. So these are the 10 categories of biomedical waste. Try to memorize them. It's quite simple. Give 5 minutes to on it and you can memorize it. So now we are moving on to the color coding for disposal of biomedical waste. And this is the last topic that we are going to deal in the waste chapter. So let's see. For color coding, we need to classify them into infected and non-infected waste. So under non-infected waste comes the cytotoxic drugs and chemical wastes. Now infected waste, it includes a solid waste, anatomical waste, infected plastics and sharps. All these have different color codings. Let's see what are the codings of the color. So cytotoxic drugs and chemicals will fall into the black bin. And it contains the category 5, 6 and 10. Solid wastes into red bin. That is category 3, 6, 7. Anatomical waste into yellow bin. That is category number 1, 2, 3 and 6. Infected plastics into blue bin. Category 7. And sharps in white bin. That is the category 4. So with this, we finish the waste chapter. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you so much.